Hello, friends. Welcome back. So talking about narcissistic abuse, talking about childhood trauma, talking about CPTSD, have you ever had somebody tell you when you're describing what those um, abuse and manipulation relationships have made you feel, have you ever had somebody say to you, well, nobody can make you feel anything? If so, I want to talk about this today through the lens of trauma. Okay, because I agree and I disagree with that statement. So if somebody ever made you feel that way, and if you've ever felt shame in the sense that maybe you agree with the statement as well, but at the same time, you see that you are reacting in ways that feel out of your control, then you're going to want to watch this video. So for those that don't know me, my name is Michelle. I'm a life and relationship coach. I specialize in helping people overcome the side effects of emotional trauma, whether it's due to narcissistic abuse, complex PTSD, or childhood trauma. I'm also the founder of the Thriver School of Transformation, which is a monthly membership where we meet live on Zoom. And we talk about all the things I talk about in my channel, where we talk about all the tools and we work through them together. So I'll leave that link as a resource for anyone that's interested. So let's talk about that statement. Nobody can make you feel anything. And like I said, I agree and I disagree with it. Okay, so let's start with the agreeing part. I agree with that statement in the sense that if you think about it, two people can face the same circumstance and one person is left feeling fine and the other person is left feeling completely dysregulated. When we look at it, that, that the same action can affect people differently, then it's obvious that it's not so much the external action that's gonna affect how we feel, more the internal, what's going on on the inside. The reality is, is that no matter what somebody does, no matter what somebody says, no matter how they act, it's your choice how you wanna feel about their actions, right? It's your choice, the meaning that you give it which is gonna cause you to feel a certain way. So in that sense, I agree. Like nobody can take something and plant it inside of you without your consent, so to speak. However, where it gets a little blurry in my eyes, okay, is the fact that a lot of people that are overcoming complex PTSD, narcissistic abuse and childhood trauma, they are not living consciously yet. So in other words, for, for you to choose how you want to feel about somebody's actions, you have to be very conscious and aware. And anyone that has undergone narcissistic abuse, anyone that has undergone long-term emotional manipulation, you're living in a default. You're living in the beliefs and the thought patterns of uh, what you were raised around. Okay, so for example, if as a child, if every time you were happy, right, your caregiver gave you a nasty look and you're a two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old child, they gave you a nasty look, then they kind of rejected you emotionally. Um, they withheld their love, their acceptance. Well, guess what the brain does? On a subconscious level, it begins to associate you feeling happy with something bad happening. It also begins to associate a person's, that expression that your caregiver had, that look of contempt, that look of um, um, unhappiness or disgust at times, right? It memorizes that look and associates it with danger. That takes place on a subconscious level. You're not consciously choosing to say, when somebody makes that face, I'm going to feel unsafe. No. The patterns that are taking place because of CPTSD, the patterns that are taking place because of emotional trauma are affecting your nervous system. They're affecting your implicit memory. They're affecting your subconscious programs. So, when we take that layer of trauma into consideration, and let's say you, you are now in a relationship with somebody that um, 
is the same kind of abusive way that your caregiver was. Okay, anytime you were happy, they want to do everything to stamp it out. And you're suddenly feeling happy and all they do is give you this look and it completely changes what's going on in your inner landscape, right? All of a sudden you feel nervous, you feel uncomfortable, you feel fear, you feel all of these things that don't make sense on a logical level. So let's say you're just learning all of these things and somebody comes around and says, well, you know, that's your fault because you're the one that's choosing to feel those things. You know, you can't, nobody can make you feel anything. That's your choice. Well, basically at that moment, taking that layer of trauma into consideration, that person would be 100% invalidating what happens as a result of complex trauma. They are invalidating what happens on a subconscious level. They are invalidating what happens when you are not living consciously, when you're living unconsciously in default programs that you don't even realize are running in your life. They're denying that as if that doesn't exist. And so that's where I disagree with that statement. So now there's like this fine line between what do you do about the information? Because there's two things I could do right now, right? I could, other than turn white as a ghost, which is what's happening with my lighting, um, but two things I could do. One is I could completely validate you and enable you at the same time. I could say it's not your fault, you know, that it's because of the trauma, you know, that person doesn't understand you and poor you and you shouldn't have gone through that. And by the way, all of this is true. All of the things I'm saying is true. But if that is all I do is kind of blame the trauma, then I am in a way enabling you to stay stuck unconscious. So the balance thing that I'm trying to do with my channel, that I'm trying to do with the videos I put up is validate that that, that happened, to validate that layer, that thick and painful layer of trauma because it is very real, okay? And at the same time, try to help you to feel or learn how to feel empowered. And the way you do that is acknowledging the unconscious programs are causing you to feel certain things, acknowledging where they came from, acknowledging that they are subconscious programs that were there and they're getting kicked on by similar situations. And then asking yourself or encouraging you to ask yourself, even though, even though these subconscious programs were put in me, what can I do about it? And that's where we kind of bring it full circle. Because once we acknowledge the unconscious behaviors, once we acknowledge the trauma layer, then we can come back to, well, what do I want to choose? I didn't choose those original default behaviors, thoughts, associations. What do I want to choose? And when we work through the trauma by upgrading our subconscious beliefs, by working through those thought patterns, by breaking out of those unconscious default settings that we have, so to speak, that's when we can choose how we want to feel in response to anybody. Okay. And I say that from experience. There was a time in my life where if somebody was upset with me, I can't tell you the emotional dysregulation that would take place in my body, just having somebody unhappy with me, the feelings that would come up, the fears that would come up, the dialogue, the inner dialogue of spinning, of fear, of, of um, putting yourself down, of confusion. And I know what it's like to work through that. It's not easy. It's not always fun either. But I also know what it's like to now be in a situation where if somebody doesn't like me, I can feel it in my body. It can come on because guess what? Even if you recover and heal from CPTSD, you are still human. <laughs> so I can feel it. But instead of my brain going down those pathways that it used to, now it's like, oh, okay, that hurts or I'm sad or, you know, that's disappointing, but it's also okay. Like they're allowed 
to not like me and I'm still allowed to feel however I choose to feel. So that's bringing it full circle. But I did want to address this because I know that when I was in the beginning of my healing journey and I didn't feel in control of my reactions, I didn't feel in control of my feelings. I didn't feel in control of my thoughts. They all had so much more power than my conscious mind, which makes sense because all of our default settings, beliefs, everything is part of our subconscious and our subconscious has so much more power than our conscious mind. Right? So I didn't feel like I had power over those things. And if somebody were to say to me, well, you're choosing that, you know, I think it would have felt, um, I think that would have done more damage than good. I don't think that that statement is um, something that can help people feel empowered when they're still learning about trauma. So I just want to throw that, that out there. This is, I guess, my weekend rant, um, but I do hope it helped anybody that is struggling with this and hears statements like that. And if you are struggling and you want to work through the trauma and you're still feeling like no matter how much you learn, you, you feel like you're in the same patterns and the same thoughts and the same feelings, make sure you check out the Thriver School of Transformation because it's the weekly back and forth live assistance that can help you personalize everything that you're learning online so that you can really start to see change and shifts in your personal life.